The slash clone command is an incredibly useful command, but at first glance it often just looks like a jumble of numbers and it's not entirely clear how to actually make it work properly. So I'm just going to quickly walk through all the steps to make it actually work. So I'm going to be demoing on this little house that I've built here, and as you can see I have built a little rectangle around it to indicate the exact space that I want to clone, and I want to clone it into this other rectangle over here. So to get started with that, let's just take a look at the exact format of the slash clone command. So if we say slash help clone, that will tell us slash clone begin, end, destination, and then a bunch of other stuff. The main thing you need to worry about are these three things here, begin, end, and destination. All three of these are going to be sets of coordinates indicating blocks. Beginning and end are used to indicate the area that you want to be cloning. Essentially, they should be coordinates of opposite corners of the rectangle that you want to copy. In other words, for our case, it could be the coordinates of this gold block and, say, this diamond block on the opposite end. So you can use any set of opposite corners, but you can't use corners that are not opposite. The easiest way to get the coordinates of these blocks is to look at the block, say slash clone, then just press tab three times to get the suggested value. Then you can just go ahead and run the command. It won't do anything, but it'll sort of save it. So then you can fly over to the opposite corner, say slash up to bring up your old command and do the same thing. Just press tab three times. And then why don't you just run it again to get it saved again. So now with beginning and end set, we need to get destination. Destination is kind of the most complicated because as you might guess, you are taking the coordinates of one of the corners of your destination rectangle. But which corner exactly is not entirely obvious. Essentially, it is the corner with the lowest value for the x, y, and z coordinates. So that can be a little bit difficult to just figure out immediately, so I have a little bit of a trick for it, and sometimes that trick is a little bit hard to explain what I mean, but hopefully I can do a good job here. Essentially, if you press F3, you'll notice your cursor in the middle of the screen will change from a little plus to these set of axes. So the lines on each of these axes are basically pointing in the positive x, y, and z direction. What that means is that these lines should also essentially be pointing from the corner that you're selecting towards the rest of the structure. So suppose we decided to try to put it in this corner, right? If you look here, the red and green lines are both pointing in the right direction, but the blue line is pointing directly away from the rest of the structure. So that's not right. Similarly, just as one more example, if we were to try putting it in this corner, well, now the red and blue lines are pointing in the right direction, but the green line is pointing straight up, whereas we want the structure to be below. So going off of that, we can see that if we want our lines to be pointing towards the rest of the rectangle, we want this corner, because when we put it here, we have the red, green, and blue lines pointing towards the rest of the structure. So if we, just like before, say slash up to bring up the old clone command while looking at the appropriate block, press tab three times to get in the coordinates automatically, and then our command is actually set up, so if we run it, you can see we get an exact copy of the house right here. So really that is most of the use of slash clone. When I'm using slash clone, maybe like 80% of the time, this is the command I'm running. However, there are a few more options. We have filtered, mask, or replace, as well as force, move, or normal. So the first set of these, Replace is just the default. You go over and it just does it, replacing all the blocks here with the blocks from over there. So like, for example, if we had built up another little structure here and we were to run that command, it would just get rid of that structure. It's just completely replaced by the old one. Masked, on the other hand, only clones the blocks that aren't air. In other words, if we have this little structure that I've built here out of diamonds, clone over our house, you can see all the blocks, like the stone bricks, are actually cloned over and replace the diamond blocks, but all the pieces of air don't replace. So we're left with part of our structure, but a lot of it is replaced by the new structure. Lastly, filtered lets you pick only one kind of block to clone. So if I said filtered, I could say spruce planks, and it would only clone the spruce planks, and we would be left with this like strange half structure. The second set of three choices essentially have to do with what happens to the old structure. So normal is the default, and what it means is that you can clone it over, 
But if we were to say pick a set of coordinates that overlapped with the old boundaries, it would not let us do it. You can see there it says the source and destination areas cannot overlap. If the boundaries don't overlap, force does the exact same thing as normal. It just clones it over. But if the boundaries do overlap, all it really does is it just lets you actually have those boundaries overlap. So now if we do that, you can see a little bit of our old boundaries here just get replaced with the new house. Lastly, move deletes the old copy of the house, essentially letting you, you know, move it from one spot to another. So if I run it now, we just get it entirely shifted over here. Although, I mean, some of the stuff that was outside of the boundary stays behind, apparently. And that is the entirety of Slash Clone. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did find it helpful, you know, don't forget to like or subscribe or I don't care. If you didn't find it helpful, honestly, please tell me that you didn't find it helpful. And if possible, tell me like what you didn't find helpful. Because if people don't find this helpful, I may well redo it so that it is, you know, more helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have any other tutorials you would like me to make, because I am always happy to do that. And I will see you all next time. Goodbye.